to the Ludcast. We are here. Get used to it. We're here, we're in your ear. Get used to it. We're here and we're not queer. Get used to it. <laughs> I am Matthew Ludcate. And as always, with Jesse Tiffin, my co-navigator. Say hi. How art thy they nice? How art thy thee they them there? Yes, those. Uh, they're gay. <laughs> Two minutes and ten seconds. A new record, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck it. <laughs> I want to talk about George Floyd. <laughs> it's been a year since George Floyd happened. Who's that? Mama, 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 I can't breathe, I can't breathe, mama, mama, ooh, mama, mama, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, no, I can't breathe. I never heard of the guy. Yeah. You know what I was thinking today? I was thinking that his family probably couldn't fucking stand to be around him too much. But now, oh, George, oh, George, thanks for making us multi-multi-millionaires. I was thinking, like, if he has any fucking kids, like, his great-great-grandkids will be CEOs of some fucking huge corporation that's just like the Floyd Co. or something, and it'll be so completely removed from anything that really happened and how that went down that he'll be remembered as great grandpa George that made the family fortune, but it'll be like shrouded in mystery. And so they'll just be like, Oh, grandpa George, great grandpa George, you were fantastic. What a great guy. He's, they said he was just the most kind giving man. Blah, blah, blah. And that's fucking how history really gets written. So most of the people that we revere were probably full of fucking shit and fucked up or lie so. or or just fucking lied about and shit. I think that's how life works. Yeah. That, that's not how life works, that's how people work. His, history is taught to us here. Yeah. yeah. So you get generations of people pumping bullshit up your ass. It's the whole Yankee Doodle phenomenon, you know? Well, it's like, you know, you know, Chief Seattle or Chief Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I was reading this thing, like you see all those cool like sayings that he talked about, you know, about how, you know, the white man would use up every resource till there's not one drop of water left to drink. That is and very that, deep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All that, pro, all that prophetic stuff, you know, that like touches you on a, on a soul level. Well, it turns out he didn't write any of that. There's some dude back in the 70s. I forget his name. You know, I'd have to look it up. But he actually was that the dude wrote wrote all that and then put like Chief Seattle's name on it. You know, was that the same dude who was pulling all those fucking fakes like that, the fake documents and shit? Was that the same guy who who went around until he got busted out, but he was producing all that fake historical documents? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Are you talking about the Salamander paper guy? Is that, is that the one who like, 
aged all that shit so convincingly. Yeah. He was just fucking people up like experts yeah, I don't know and shit. That guy, but um, you know, it's people believe that it's Chief Seattle that said all those things, and maybe you know he kind of said things like that in the past, and he was like some wise old Indian guy, you know, like, or Native American. It's like but, I, I repeated the white man's words as my yeah. own. <laughs> <laughs> and was mistakenly attributed these wise words when I was really but a humble, dumb savage. <laughs> I enjoyed scalping the rival tribes and raping their women. <laughs> In harmony with nature. Hey! Hey, uh, huh! His totem was a beluga whale. With a huge engorged penis. <laughs> <laughs> I am like the mighty beluga. I will spear you with my horn and fuck you with my other horn. <laughs> <laughs> Never mess with the beluga. Listen, pal. You're missing the music. It's not the same without it. I know. It's, it's a little dry. Hang on. But yeah, fake history, right? Uh-huh. Fake history. How things really went down and how they're portrayed, especially over time. Totally. Yeah. You know, it was like Paul Revere, you know, was coined as saying that, uh, the British are coming, the British are coming, warning everybody. But the truth was, is he was screaming like a bitch as he ran because the British were coming. It's like, the British are coming! The British the are British. coming! Oh my god, the British! No! <laughs> Fag. It's kind of like G old senior Bush, you know, as a hero and a, a great man. You know, all the, the good things he's done and you know, Clintons, I mean, they're just all great people, right? Mm -hmm. Obama, they, oh, the things they do for humanity, it's unbelievable. He, Obama, so classy, so well-spoken, they just can't help being racist as fuck about it. <laughs> so, arti <laughs> so articulate. Like, what, is he supposed to not be able to speak or something? They're like, ring, ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like he was going to get up on the podium and go, Yo, man, what the fuck's up, everybody? I'm your nigga. I'm head nigga in charge now, man. Let's do this shit. Like, did you think he was going to be like that? And then he dropped the microphone. Dang. He just went, Fuck it, man. I'm out. Fuck y'all. <laughs> oh. Fuck that. Fuck history. Yo, fuck history, man. I'll celebrate my 2A right now and I'll say, over the weekend I fucking shot a Glock for the first time and it was fucking awesome. What a superior, what, what a superior fucking designed, engineered fucking thing. It just is. That thing is the safest fucking thing you can imagine. Truly. If your finger's not on that trigger, there's no fucking chance of that motherfucking thing going off. Not one goddamn chance of it. It's awesome. There's no there's no dumb safety buttons on there that if you forget about could get you killed in a bad moment. There's no fucking like, oh, I pulled it out of the holster and blew my fucking hand off or my foot off because it was cocked or something. No, dude. Safest fucking thing in the world, dude. You could fucking, you could take a loaded fucking Glock and throw it a fucking cross a room and bounce it off the floor and off the fucking wall. That motherfucker's not going off. It's awesome. Did you try it? I no, you, no. Fuck no, it wasn't my weapon. I'm not going to do that shit to somebody else's gun. Hey, check this out. Oh. No. So what keeps it from firing or misfiring? It's the, uh, there's a double safety, there's a safety, the safety mechanism is a double trigger system, which is like a three, like a three stager in that unless you have your finger on the trigger, and it's and it's you know and has a round in the chamber until you squeeze that thing it is engineered to never 
discharge. The hammer will never go down onto a bullet unless your finger is actually squeezing that thing. The way it's all mechanically works, the Austrians nailed it completely in the most safe design you could ever possibly have. And that's why there's only one Glock in the world and it is the best. All, all the military and all the, uh, the uh, law enforcement, you know, it's pretty, I mean, not every single place, but pretty unanimous across most of the globe that these kinds of units, SWATs and all these, all these people w use the Glock. There's just, it's, it's hands down a superior weapon. It's just period. But they still manage to shoot people accidentally sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, but it has nothing to do with the fucking gun misfiring. <laughs> <laughs> Operator error. <laughs> Oops. But yeah. Yeah, I was like, did you see that one per that one uh, cop that shot someone? They thought they were pulling out their taser, but they pulled out their Glock. Yeah. Did, did you see that? I, I heard mean, about that, seems, that. Yeah, that seems a little uh, suspicious. Oh, it would, Yeah, that, I don't know. That's a pretty lame, lame excuse, you know. Well, especially since I imagine, I mean, I'm not a police officer, so I don't know. But my assumption would be that if you carried a taser... But you're, hum you're human, though, right? Yes. However, if you carried a taser and your weapon, your your weapon is always going to be your strong, strong hand. Yeah. Like... Right or left, whichever you are, it's always going to be that hand. So, your muscle memory and your training, extensive fucking cop training that they have to go through, <laughs> continually, always fuck. Would you would always be like, if this, if your strong hand goes down, that's business time. Like, and your taser would probably be on the opposite side, so that if you were to tase, you were grabbing, so that. Just the deepest psychological level of it, your body is understanding and your mind, without you having to consciously think, my right hand goes down, that's my fucking gun. You're just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm agreeing with you. The training and stuff, how, how would you actually justify that mistake happening? Because that's, that's such a big mistake that that's not one that can be overlooked. Take back after yeah, you, you you can't go. Well, my training didn't, and I no. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's once you kill somebody, you can't really take that back. Oh no, that's a for, <laughs> that's a forever thing. I'm afraid you'll have to throw that into the randomizer of the wheel of samsara, and somebody somewhere's gonna have to take on your guilt for that shit <laughs> when they're reincarnated into another pile of crap. And turn you into a false hero? Yeah. <laughs> a fucking false martyr? Awesome. Yeah. Just the it's way amazing. I want to be remembered. It's amazing how they can be done. <gasps> he was a fuckhead, but he didn't he didn't deserve to die like that. Listen. Live by the fucking sword, die by the sword. There's a reason that fucking saying exists and it's a fucking ageless. It's because that's the fucking truth. Some will call it yeah. karma, some will call it by different fucking names. The reality is, man, that's the energy you put out, that's the energy that comes back. And when it comes back and fucks you all up, oh, poor, poor fucking asshole. Fuck that shit. You were a jag-off, you did jag-off shit, and you died because you were doing a jag-off thing. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you go out and you rap about fucking killing people every day, I mean... Is it really that strange that you might get shot yourself? Yeah, one day somebody's just going to connect with it and be like, is this motherfucker for real? And you were...